All right, let's get right to the crux of the matter. RSPCA in South Australia has convinced Susan Close and all of the other MPs that bow hunting is unethical and inhumane. That is the position statement, right? So I'll be honest right off the bat that a bunch of rat bags, scumbag teenagers, and unfortunately Australia has a lot of those that molest, abuse, disrespect wildlife by purposely causing pain and suffering to them is absolutely disgusting. It has no place in our society, but that is no reflection on bow hunting. It's like someone drives drunk and hurts someone, puts them in a hospital, or dare I say kills someone, and you decide you're gonna ban driving. That's what you are making in terms of a comparison here. So let's be completely honest, and let's break down this unethical and inhumane argument that Susan Close and the RSPCA is pushing. So let's define it, right? Let's define unethical and inhumane. Inhumane is defined as without compassion for misery or suffering, i.e. cruelty. Unethical is defined as not morally correct. So let me address unethical first. Since morals are subjective to each individual, I cannot without bias claim that bow hunting is ethical or unethical. Me as a hunter will obviously say that bow hunting is ethical. Someone from the RSPCA will say that it is unethical. So with that, we are at an impasse. Unethical, ethical, whoever has the loudest voice on social media is going to win. So let's go the inhumane definition without compassion for misery or suffering. So if that was the case, if we were without compassion for misery and suffering, then that would mean that all the bow companies, all the arrow manufacturers, all the broad, broad, broadhead manufacturers would not be increasing their technological advancement of the gear itself, right? All of those companies wouldn't be interested in quick kills, efficient deaths, and being as lethal as possible, right? Wrong. Let's explore that. Are bows, arrows, broadheads getting more technologically advanced or becoming more primitive? They're becoming more technologically advanced, which means, again, they are becoming less inhumane and becoming more humane based on the definition. Bows are getting faster, arrows are becoming more stable in flight, broadheads are in fact getting sharper and more lethal. In mechanical engineering, just reach out to Iron Will Outfitters and you will have a mechanical engineer running a company because he believes in the more engineering in a broadhead, the more lethal it becomes. Okay, so if it's not the technology that's making things less inhumane, and I don't see how you cannot see that, but let's just assume you cannot, let's look at other factors. So let's look at penetration, right? So arrows often zip through animals. Uh, there are videos online that show arrows being more able to penetrate sand buckets than bullets, but there's also videos online that show arrows penetrating two inches. So from a penetration perspective, it's all actually about where the arrow is placed which means then we have to go to the next factor, which is practice. And here is where the social media world that we live in is actually a positive. I need you to just Google Instagram bow hunters, bow hunting. What you will find is more often than not, social media influencers that are bow hunters continually practicing. And lots of bow hunters, probably every single bow hunter that you see on Instagram is going to be practicing. You have to ask the question why. Why is someone practicing bow hunting. It's to make them better. It's to make them more effective. It's to make them more lethal. Which means that we are becoming less inhumane and becoming more humane without compassion for misery or suffering. The more lethal you are, the more compassion you have for taking that animal's life. Okay, okay, okay. So what you're saying is, Robbie, it's still conjecture what you're saying. It's still words. We can't be bothered to go do research on all these bow companies, on these broadhead companies, on the arrows. We just don't want to do the work to find it. Okay, well, let me put forward science. Then you can't really argue with science. The only thing you can argue with is the methodology, the experimental design, and whether the scientist actually was truly objective in undertaking the work that they, she, he undertook, right? So right now in 2023, the most definitive study around bow hunting is concluding in Finland, in which they compared a hundred white-tailed deer that were shot with a rifle against 130 deer that were shot with a bow and arrow. And lo and behold, the study has shown that they are equally effective 
at killing deer, i.e. there's no difference between rifle hunting and bow hunting. The science is showing that. We haven't seen the other part of the study that shows the cortisol levels, i.e. the stress hormone that's within the blood that you can measure between animals that are shot with a rifle and animals that are shot with a bow. Based on other scientific studies out there, it's more than likely to show that bow hunted animals had less cortisol in their blood than rifle hunting. But I will say there is very, very, very little work on cortisol stress levels in animals that are bow hunted. There's only three studies out there that have really looked at cortisol levels in animals that are being hunted. In 2014 in Science, there was a paper done on comparing wolves that are hunted in the tundra tiger area to the northern boreal forest to a control study. And they showed that hunted animals that are in the tundra tiger group had higher cortisol levels because of hunting and trapping. There was another study by Gould and Fennec that looked at cortisol levels as a result of driven hunts in red deer, driven hunts in Portugal, and showed that these animals, when under driven conditions, expressed higher levels of cortisol in their bloodstream, i.e. the stress hormone, right, that they're being hunted. There was another study by Viela et al, Viela et al, that showed another study tied to red deer and cortisol levels in the blood. But the best study that I think is out there right now comes out of Europe and it's done by Gensch et al. They looked at various animal species and they looked at various hunting activities and measured the cortisol levels respectively of those animals against the activity or the types of hunting that is occurring. They also threw in their injuries like getting caught in a fence and vehicle collisions. What do you think had the highest cortisol levels? Not hunting fence injuries, and vehicle collisions. What of the hunting activities do you think had the lowest levels of cortisol in the bloodstream? Those that were being stalked versus those that were being chased and hunted by dogs. Lastly, the 2023 study that is happening right now in Finland proves that bow hunting is just as effective as rifle hunting. So it cannot be an inhumane practice if the RSPCA is claiming that gun hunting is humane and bow hunting is not. The science shows that is patently false. So what I framed out is very objective, it's very science based, it's very driven by data and facts. I have not slid into the subjective world, I've not slid into the emotional world. But just for a second, let me do it. All the animals that are hunted in Australia are non-indigenous species that have significant impacts on Australia's native flora and fauna. So what the RSPCA is actually saying here, when they call for a bow hunting ban, is that you actually prefer the method that the government is undertaking to control these non-indigenous species, which is poisoning and helicopter culling, both of which if you've ever seen a poisoned deer die, it is the most painful, murderous death that you can execute on an animal. So the RSPCA is saying that's what you would prefer. We don't want bow hunting, which as I've proven objectively is most humane way to take an animal out. So what you're actually saying is we want the most inhumane practice. We want poisoning. We want culling just because that means you don't actually get to hunt. Just because you hate hunting so much, you will be inhumane to these non-indigenous wildlife through poisoning and helicopter gulling. Unbelievable. It makes no sense just because you hate the practice of hunting. So sad. It's unbelievable that you cannot understand the reasoning, objectivity behind a practice and the humaneness, the humaneness of the practice just because of the veil of hate on an action that forces inhumane actions on the wildlife that we actually care about.